What is up Moon Race? I am just a simple new type and in this video we are continuing our journey through the correct century and turn a Gundam. In our last episode, we learned about the beginnings of the correct century. Lauren learned from Gwen that the white doll that he pilots can be used as a tool. To have negotiating powers with the Moon Race, they need to be seen as equals. And for that to happen, Earth needs to show a sign of power and force. But will a handful of mobile suits and the Turn A Gundam be enough? In this episode, Lauren cross-dresses as a woman, some people try to assassinate the queen, and Lauren helps a man find a cow. This is a random one, so let's dive into it. The militia gather and prepare for another attack. Lauren is in a dirigible with Kehill Heim and Mrs. Heim. Ever since Master Heim's death, Kehill's mother has been completely out of it. Sochi and Miyashi go out in a plane with the militia. Lauren drops a ladder and jumps onto the plane. He lands and hurts his little Manofsky particles. Sochi tells Lauren of the militia's plan to steal one of the mechanical dolls. The militia breaches the Moon Race's camp and start attacking. Miyashi jumps out of the plane and lands on top of a construction mobile suit, putting up a fence. Miyashi confuses this with a military mobile suit and tries to capture it. With a hammer? Bless her heart. The MRSBI 05 Omega Jet Stream is a worker mobile suit designed to put up fences. It will later be repurposed as a support unit. It also goes by the name Mobile Rib. Poe and the Wodom comes and captures Miyashi from the minimal damage he caused. Harry and Gwen are continuing negotiations. It seems Gwen and Earth are now taking the stance and denying any contact with them over the past two years in a very tongue-in-cheek manner. Harry calls him a barbarian and recommends not letting this turn to war. Lauren plans on saving Miyashi with the turning Gundam. He goes out with Sochi flying close by. Miyashi is able to escape as Lauren heads towards the Moonrace camp. Poe in the Wodom uses Miyashi as a hostage to try to get the mustached Gundam. Turn A comes in and takes out the Wodom's hand and takes Miyashi back. He runs away. Back near vicinity town, the new mobile suits that Sid excavated are being repaired. These are the Kapools. The AMX 109 Kapool, referred to as the ball, is very similar in looks to the AMX 109 Kapool that we will soon see in Mobile Suit Gundam Double Z and Unicorn. The inside of the cockpit looks like something from the Neo Zeon era of Universal Century. Though the Earth Militia doesn't know it yet, the unit is actually designed for underwater combat. It has a missile launcher, laser beam, iron nail, sonic blast, and an anti-aircraft cannon. Both Earth and the Moon Race await the arrival of the Soleil. The ship lands on Earth and Queen Diana Sorel gets out and touches grass for the first time. Meanwhile, the militia is also heading into the city with Kapools disguising their trucks as produce trucks. Lauren tells Sochi that he doesn't think their plan is going to work. Once the Diana counter reaches the city, there are rioters blocking the streets. Diana has a security guard of sumos. The MRC F-20 sumo stands for Strike Unit for Maneuver Operations. Although versatile on Earth, it functions best in space. It also has an eye field generator. The sumo's eye field generator is located on the unit's left arm. The eye field can be used offensively as well as used to keep an enemy in place with a technique known as the eye field banker. It also has a flight booster that allows it to fly in Earth atmosphere. Other weapons include a hand beam gun and a heat fan. Harry is in his golden sumo. Both Lauren and Harry meet in the city. Gwen prevents them from fighting and they work together to protect the queen. Kiel and Diana meet for the first time. Meanwhile, Sid may have found more mobile suits around the mountain cycle. He forces Sochi and Miyashi to help him. Lauren meets with Keith and Fran separately. Later that day, Sochi and Miyashi and the Kapul attack the Wodoms. Lauren in the turn A comes in to help, but he has no weapons. He finds a map that shows a location to where he could find weapons for the mobile suit. When he gets there, most of the weapons crumble due to their age, but he at least has a ball and chain to work with, similar to the Gundam Hammer in Universal Century. Lauren returns to help the Kapools. He is able to get the upper hand on the Wodom despite its size. The Wodom retreats. Lauren is wondering why Diana is on Earth and hoping Earth doesn't get destroyed as he has learned to love the planet. Diana suggests that the Earth and the Moon Race have a party. 
She sends out a letter to Gwen. At the party, they want Lauren to go as a woman for reasons. In Noxus, Keith makes a cake for the moon race after letting one of their soldiers try some bread. Kihel, Gwen, and Lauren arrive at the party. Harry comes to greet Lauren, or in this case, Laura. Unfortunately, the Earthlings and Moonrace are not interacting with one another at the party. Harry asks Lauren to dance with him. After dancing, Gwen takes Lauren to meet with the Queen. The cake made by Keith is shown to the Queen. Suddenly, three men come out from under the cake and try to kill Diana. Lauren chases them in the Tournay Gundam, but they get away as Lauren didn't want to crush them. One of the men dropped a portable breathing device suggesting it might have been the moon race behind this. Even with the attempted assassination, Diana still wishes to reopen negotiation. Kiel and Sochi argue over how this conflict should be approached. One wants conflict, the other wants to negotiate. Kihil and Gwen talk about Lauren. Gwen jokingly mentions that someone as genuine as Lauren must be hiding something. Perhaps he knows he is a part of the moon race. A mobile rib is putting up fences in the area causing havoc towards the local farmers. The moon race start a scuffle with the earthlings. Lauren in the turn A comes in to help. Meanwhile, Fran confirms that Lauren is the mustache Gundam pilot. She was taking pics at the gala and is now close by to the scuffle happening. Lauren, Fran, Keith, and Sochi meet up in the forest. Sochi knows something is up with the three and starts to assume they are spies. Also, Sochi reminds everyone that a 14-year-old is considered an adult in vicinity town. That sucks. Anyways, Lauren helps a man find a cow to get some milk while Sochi tries to learn more about Lauren from Fran. They find a cow. The man is really turned on by this cow's boobs. He tries to catch the cow. Back at the farm, a mama pig goes mad. Lauren goes out in the tournay to help with the pigs. He then goes out to help with the cow when suddenly Poe and a small team of wads begin to attack Turn A Gundam. Harry comes in to remind Poe that they are in a ceasefire currently. She withdraws her wads. The Turn A was able to get the man, the livestock, and the resources he needed, but the people of Earth thinks the Moon Race has stolen Earth resources. Lauren feels he has no choice but to tell the world that he is a part of the Moon Race. Sochi slaps Lauren for lying to her. A new ship lands on Earth. Three mobile suits come out of the cargo bay. They are not on the list of supplies. They recognize one of the men as Corn Nander. He is apparently from the Dark History and has been cryogenically frozen and taken out and used as an instrument for war. He is in the Egal. The TAF M9 Egal is similar to the Walking Dumpling in its frame construction. Its spine has great dexterity and its head can be used as a hammer. It also has a drill and uses a modified beam gun used by the Sumos. Jacob and Bruno are the two men who are a part of his Corn Nander Independent Corps. They are piloting Gozos. The NRS P701 Gozo is a long range mobile suit. These things are designed for space combat and perform poorly on Earth. It also has a micro missile launcher. The Moon Race goes to inform Harry of this situation. Corn Nander is definitely on the crazy side. This is due to his longevity of life and constantly being frozen. The front page of the paper has Lauren's face as he recently told the world he is one of the Moon Rays. However, Gwen is trying to spin this in a way where Lauren and Laura can still be seen as two separate people. Weird choice. While going to visit Keith at the bakery, Lauren is met with some of the Moon Rays that want to take him somewhere. Sochi comes in to visit Gwen and Kihil. She is frustrated that Lauren lied to them about being a part of the Moon Rays. Gwen suggests that perhaps Sochi should be the pilot of the White Doll. It was Harry that had Lauren taken. Harry and Lauren meet. He is starting to realize that perhaps Laura and Lauren are the same person. Lauren plays dumb and pretends he doesn't know of the location of the White Doll. Harry takes him as a prisoner. At the mountain cycle, the Kapool pilots are doing a training exercise when from above, Korn and his team come down to attack Miyashe and the Kapools. Korn's team is able to take out most of the Kapools. Korn refers to the White Doll as the Gundam, which is the first mention of the Gundam by the Moon Race. Gwen is informed of the attack at the Mountain Cycle. It seems that the Moon Race made the first move, but does Diana know of this attack? Meanwhile, Keith is trying to sell the flat that they traveled to Earth in. 
he is so desperate for money for the bakery that he is willing to sell their mobile suit. The militia agrees, but they are attacked by Corrin's team. He yells out for the Gundam. Gwen still can't get a hold of Lauren. He sends Sochi out in the turn A for a recon mission to see who is attacking the mountain cycle. Harry sets Lauren free. He wants Lauren to go find Laura, but he is going to help out Sochi and the Gundam instead. Sochi goes out to find Corrin. They engage in battle. Lauren goes to help Sochi. He takes Sochi's place as the pilot. Lauren and Corrin begin their battle. As the Gundam destroys the Eagle's drill, they run away as Corrin is not yet used to Earth's gravity. They wait to get acclimated to make their next move. And that will do it for this one. There is quite a lot of meandering in this episode. At least until we get to Corrin. As there is a ceasefire between the Moon Race and the people of Earth, Lauren is left to help out random people. Him announcing that he is a part of the Moon Race is meant to be a bridge to bring people together. But will it work? In our next episode, Sochi will no longer trust Lauren, and Kiel and Queen Diana will switch places with one another. But until next time, new types, if you're in need of a cow, don't come off so desperate. Peace. Me